Hello everyone, my name is Catalyst, welcome back to the channel, I hope you all are doing well, and today we have probably one of the most requested videos for the channel, and that is the positioning guide for Battlefield 2042. Hold on, let me just lower the volume of the video real quick. Um, so the reason that I have withheld on making a positioning guide for Battlefield 2042 is because the game overall is extremely unpredictable. It's a game in which a lot of the best players in the world also struggle with positioning because the maps are extremely large, the vehicle versus infantry balance is not always there, and there's a lot of players on the map. But what I've decided to do is I have decided to revamp my review your gameplay series in which people like you, the viewing audience, can submit their gameplay and I can critique it. it. So that's how we're going to bring this positioning guide into light today. And as you can see, we are reviewing some gameplay submitted by a longtime supporter of the channel, Glanshawn, who has kindly submitted his gameplay for me to critique and roast, as he put it, live. So we're going to live com this in entire video I am going to live react to his footage for the first time and we are going to try to give him some tips based on the gameplay that I see as it happens so if you like this uh, you like the style of content if you're interested in maybe submitting your own gameplay for the series you leave a like on the video and a comment down below Jesus Christ my neighbors downstairs are blasting music I can hear I can, I can literally feel my my feet rumbling from the bass that is being played downstairs. Hey! You guys quiet down? I'm making a battlefield video. Yes, I know, I know, I know the game's trash. You don't you you don't have to remind me, trust me. Okay, so we're holding the angle here. You saw somebody. And I assume that's why you're going to continue to hold this angle. Now you're gonna get shot out here curious okay well let's let's pause the video first and talk about your loadout really quickly so based on what i'm seeing from your loadout right now you're running falk with the sfar mp28 frag grenade now i'm going to assume that this might have been a mistake and maybe you were just playing another character or something but i am not exactly sure why you're playing uh with a med pen when you have when you're playing as falk in which you can heal yourself with your serret pistol which is essentially the same thing as a med pen so i don't know if this was a mistake but you're essentially you you're, you're essentially completely wasting your gadget slot by running a med pen here i would i would run ammo crate i would run maybe Armor plates would be uh, another idea here, and I know this is a positioning guide, but this has kind of caught my eye immediately. Uh, you're not getting the full utilization of your kit by running. Okay, nice headshot there with the SFAR. Sniper on the boat. Okay, so now that now that you've seen the sniper on the boat, I, I know that, you know, snipers, I think our general conception of sniping is that, okay, they're either going to be godlike or they're, they're going to miss every shot. To me... Once I see that glint on the boat there, I'm going to completely, completely rule out pushing this left side out of the equation. And I would say that going on the left side of Stranded in general is the more difficult side to push because from what limited map knowledge we know about Stranded, we know that these hills over here are really good head glitches for the defending side and it's very difficult to push and you're also moving yourself in position to be killed off spawn because the defending random spawn is down in the open by the boat. So this left side is not really the best. Um, that's kind of a dangerous peek there. I probably wouldn't have peeked that. If I'm you in this situation right now, I am going to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> for that exact reason. You're going to get a revive here, but at this point, the, the game is up, right? The enemies know exactly where you are on the rock. You're getting shot at the rock. At that point, I am not going to be peeking this rock again, and this is where I was going to go back on the loadout. I would be running smoke grenades here because realistically, you have worked yourself into a pretty rough position on this rock. But now, how do you get yourself out of that position? Well, if you're running smoke grenades here, you can smoke and rotate around to the right side, which in my opinion is the better side anyways, and that's what I'd be doing in this situation. Now, you're con continuing to hold the same angle after you've already been killed by it. I really would have liked to see you go around this way, uh, more towards the side of the mountain. Let's see if you do it this time. Again, I would have liked to see you not be running the med pen, considering that you can do this with the Soret. Okay. 
Okay, so let's talk about this spot here. Um, I can understand why you chose this spot, alright? It's an off angle, this is an angle in which you can watch an area from the, where they directly spawn. But, in essence, what you've done is you've trapped yourself in this container. Um, the odds of you, logically thinking about this, the odds of you making it out of this container alive, even with majority on the flag, is kind of low. Um, I would have picked a different head glitch maybe around, along these boxes right here where I can have a little bit more mobility and freedom because essentially the decision that you've just made on this flag is, okay, I have the container and I can understand that I am going to be aiming and looking at one direction, but what if you get overwhelmed from that direction, right? You don't have the door open behind you on the container, so really your only way in or out is through this container. Now I haven't looked at this yet, but I would assume that the odds of somebody pushing you on this are pretty high. And especially with how this sector works. Ah, <laughs> see? <laughs> now, I, I didn't know that somebody was going to come through there, but just in the back of my mind is like, well, if somebody comes in here, this guy's kind of screwed. You, you're only looking at one area, there's only one way in or out, and the door isn't open behind you, so you can't be saved, you can't run out of there. The better spot probably would have been these boxes where you can also watch that long lane on the other side of the boxes. And essentially, what that would have been able to do is you would have not been surprised by this guy. I think if you're pre-aiming that, that lane, you probably would have killed that guy. And I think at some point you see multiple people run across there. So let me go back even further here. I'm waiting for people to cross. I, I know there's people that cross at some point here. Yeah, one, two. Okay, so when you see that, when you see that, you think, okay, what are, what are my choices here? This spot has kind of been compromised for me. Somebody shooting at me. I just saw two people cross. Where are they most likely to go? They are most likely to go into that little tree corner right there. So what I, what most likely I would have done, instead of say, staying in here where my options are limited, I probably would have run out to this head glitch, knowing that those two people crossed there, held that angle, and then gone back to watching this angle. But instead, I think you kind of... Give yourself paralysis by analysis here, and you kind of just sit there, and you're a, a sitting duck for the player there. Okay, good. I like this. I like this. You're taking you're taking the road less traveled. That's Battlefield 2042. You can't do anything about that. That is just instant verticality in a situation in which, in any other Battlefield game, that would not be plausible or feasible, but because it's Battlefield 2042, because grapple hooks exist, you kind of got screwed there. There's nothing you can do about that. I think what I've decided to do is I'm going to watch this one way through and then record my live thoughts, and then take down some notes and go back and cover some key moments. Uh, in the video, so I really get my ideas across as opposed to trying to get an entire point across in the video while everything is changing and moving around me. I think that's a much better way to do this. Okay, why? Why? Uh, did you, did you just see? Did you just see the Irish shield and think, okay, well this this looks like a I I don't I I don't understand. I, I mean, it's not like anything bad happened after this, right? N nothing, you, I don't think you die after this, but what you do to get to this Irish shield is you turn your attention away from the opening in the boat, which is where the enemies are going to be, so you're not even looking at them here. Again, you li you literally do not need the men pen. I'm, I'm gonna... I <laughs> <clears throat> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay, I, what, I'm going to put a, uh, why the hell are you using the med pen counter in the top left hand corner, and, um, we're gonna add a couple of ticks to that just to prove a point. You know, not every player is going to have the fastest reaction time and the fastest game speed. Whew, I got nervous for a second, I thought your parachute wasn't going to pull. I have died from my parachute not pulling. Well, you're on a really good flank here. Check the spawn. Ah, okay. This is a, this is a teachable moment. This is a teachable moment here. I'm glad that I'm glad that we caught this. So, I think you have a general knowledge and understanding that 
the enemy the enemy random spawn is generally in that direction that's how they're coming back into the flag check this entryway you don't see anybody coming that's your green light to go turn into the room which you do here and you see an irish player that's set up on this head glitch you kill him pretty easily now i don't know if you spot somebody going up here i, I don't even know if you can see this on the recording because this is going to be compressed to hell considering that youtube compression is is pretty ass these days you get the easy kill here now what I would do in this situation, notice that you are the only person on the flag, it's a 1v8. Now I know that your inclination is to turn inwards because your team doesn't have control of this anymore, but in this specific situation, you need to always keep in mind that before you go and turn into the objective that you need to cover your back because the worst thing and what ends up happening here and getting you killed, the worst thing is when you're on a flank and turning to go into the objective and you get killed by somebody straight off spawn. So eliminate the possibility of you getting killed off of respawn. So what I would have seen you do here is I would have probably slid in, peeked that doorway, because there's two doorways here. There's one over here and then there's one over in this direction. There's two doorways that enter the room from there. I would have peeked that first to make sure that I'm not going to get shot in my back. But yeah, so in situations when you're on the flank, and this is a really general positioning tip, if you have the map knowledge to understand where enemies are going to be respawning from, if you're on a flank like this, just check the respawn. Check the respawn, make sure that you're not gonna get shot in the back and then clear the room because nothing is worse than getting two kills on the flank, getting shot in your back, and having all of those people just be revived over and over again. If you just, and I know it seems like a split second decision, but it's really an easy decision once you get into it. Check the respawn. If you kill that guy, you probably get three or four more kills here once you figure out where they all are because you're on the flank and people don't know that you're there. You have a grenade launcher. Use it. You have a grenade launcher, Glanchon. You have a grenade launcher! You, you Use the grenade launcher. You, okay, add another med pen tally. Use the grenade launcher. My brother in Christ, use the grenade launcher. Where the fuck did Sundance go? Huh? What? Okay, I like this. I like this. Very nice. This is great. This is this is a great play right here. Now I think I think you overstayed your welcome, and I think you tend to do that. That's some, that's kind of something that I've noticed uh, in your gameplay so far. Is once you find a nice spot, you kind of just be like, ah, this is my home. This is where I feel most comfortable. Um, the number one rule in Battlefield. It's a rule I always preach. It's a day one rule. Never say still. I I probably would have liked to see. You can cover the same angle from the longer little. I, is this a container? I guess this is a container. I don't know. Once the attacking team gets in, it's extremely difficult for the, de the defending team to... Oh, perfect. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. This, this right here is probably the angle th or, or the piece of cover that I would have chosen to use the head glitch over this little box that you decided to hide behind. You have so much more maneuverability here uh, to move along this piece of cover than you did hiding behind this gigantic Amazon box. Um, that would have been the better piece of cover. I think you made a really good decision on what angle to hold and where to hold it. You just made a slight error in which piece of cover to actually use. Because if you see from this angle, you can watch both angles from this piece of cover. Just to go back here really quickly. Um, I'm assuming that you're holding this angle because nobody else is really looking at it. And you can see somebody on the minimap here. There's a much better angle for you to look at this that basically eliminates the threat of anybody peeking this corner and taking out any of your teammates and that spot is right here you're kind of holding an off angle in a situation in which you shouldn't be holding the off angle i think i would be over here making sure that i can watch outside and that little doorway because right now you're kind of restricting yourself this is also why i preach smoke grenades if you just throw a smoke grenade run across and hold that angle that's perfect. You'd be helping your team tremendously by holding that off angle or by holding this angle over here so you can watch outside and the door as opposed to just watching this gigantic door 
which theoretically speaking, if somebody came through the door, they could take out two or three of your teammates before you actually even get the chance to shoot them. Just think I would I would like to see you choose your areas to be in a little bit faster. It seems like the decision making is not quite as sharp as it would need to be. Um, which is okay, because as I said earlier in the video, not everybody is going to know exactly what to do all the time. Oh, you found yourself in a really nice position here. Why why did you hit fire? Why did you hit fire? Glance Sean, my boy. If you you know, there's this great thing <clears throat> called aiming down sights, and I don't mean to be condescending here, but you get both these kills if you aim down sight here. Instead, you decide to hip fire, and that gives that person enough time to come and get two headshots on you with a PP-29. If, if, you, if you ADS here, especially, especially with how strong, especially with how strong the scar is, you aim down sights there, you get both kills, you get to move on. Ooh, oof. Um, oh, hello. I'm not, I'm not back in the player. Um, I'm assuming, did you, did you mean to spawn here and not on this guy? Cause man, this looks like a nice juicy spawn to me. Or are you spawning back here to capitalize on the flank? Aha! Uh -huh. I'm I'm kind of intrigued as to what your plan is here. What what are you what are you doing out here? Why? I I'm hesitant to say this, but I'm pretty sure you might have been able to, you might have been able to accomplish the same thing that you're trying to do here by spawning on this guy. And honestly, I think it would have been a better spot for you to do that because they are not going to be looking behind them for somebody that's back here. They might be looking into the spawn, however. If you think there's people here, you need to be pre-aiming some stuff. But even still, like, what a gigantic waste of time you just... <laughs> I mean, I, mean I, don't mean to be, I don't mean to be rude. I mean, you told me to roast you, but that seemed, that was just a gigantic 30 minute, 30 second to 45 second waste of time. And then you peek right into a... Uh, I, I did not like that play at all. I think you wasted a whole bunch of time unnecessarily. You probably could have spawned on your other teammate and... Uh, and this might be in hindsight, you probably could have spawned on your other teammate and done the exact same thing, but from a better angle. Just generally speaking, solo missions to go and kill the group of people that killed you are generally speaking a bad idea. Did you did you forget he was there? Um this this is this is by far the worst part of the gameplay I've seen so far. It seems like you kind of don't know what to do with yourself. Um, I don't know if you just what a res, Jesus. Uh, just got caught with a jittery aim there. I would say so far that this section of the gameplay is by far the most confusing and definitely the worst that I've seen in, in this video in particular. Um, generally speaking, don't go off on solo missions into 1v4s to avenge the people that, or, or get revenge on the people that killed you. Um, it seems like you forgot that you just got killed in the place that you respawned in. Um, never ever assume that the player that just killed you is dead. Always assume that they are alive until proven, tr until proven otherwise. But just notice how there's how there's such a lack of action in the gameplay. You're not healing anybody. You're not killing anybody. You've kind of just been doing nothing for the last two minutes. Um, and I would like to see you be a little bit more proactive. Are you gonna heal the guy at your feet? Okay, I guess not. Um, I probably. No, and this is going really fast now. I probably. Seeing that my teammate just got killed there, I probably wouldn't run out without even checking the door. Um. You kind of just take the liberty upon yourself to rush out into the door there, assuming that they're there, and you put yourself in a really bad situation. You need to always have some type of priority, some type of purpose on the map, because if you are kind of just making things up as you go along, you're going to find yourself in a lot of these situations that we've been seeing in the last four or five minutes of the gameplay, where it feels like you're doing something in the moment, but when you look back on it... <laughs> oh no... I was waiting for that to happen. You, you successfully navigated the uh, the shaft of death, 
uh, up until this point, but it kind of got you in the end. Okay, so that's a lot to take in. I'm going to cut up this live comm, and then we're going to come back and nail home a couple of key points throughout the video. So, I will see you guys in post-editing. Alright guys, Catalyst in post-editing here. So the video has reached a 20 minute mark and I don't want this to be too too long so I'm going to talk for the next 5 minutes or so and summarize some of the common themes that I saw in watching Glanchon submit the gameplay and make a few key points that I either skipped over or don't feel like I explained enough during the live reviewing of the gameplay. And this is likely going to be the format that the rest of the videos in this series are going to take and who knows, maybe I start doing these live on stream so you all can chime in and ask questions in the moment because that's what's great about this series is that even though I'm helping a specific person in the video, obviously it might help some of the questions and concerns and you might see some similarities in your gameplay and it might help you out too. So I still need to figure out some of the logistics of you know, what we're going to do. But with that being said, some of the bigger mistakes that I saw in the gameplay that I want to talk about. First of all, the big flank on the mountainside. Generally speaking, dedicating that much effort to go on a massive flank and take out the people that just killed you is a mistake and a big waste of time unless they are genuinely a reoccurring problem for your entire team you need to treat this as a death and just say that's not my job to deal with you compartmentalize it take note that they're there but do not go and try to handle the problem by yourself because what is going to happen is either a you die again B, they end up dying anyways and you just wasted a bunch of time, or C, you end up killing them all but then you lose map control elsewhere where it matters because you took the time to go and get them. And B and C is kind of the combination of what ends up happening here. As I said in the live recording, solo revenge missions or missions to the edge of the map by yourself are just a waste of time. Play with your team instead. Secondly, when on a flank, always check for enemies coming off respawn first before you go to kill people on the flag. You always want to take that chance because they are your biggest threat. If you happen to die from someone on the point looking at the flank, so be it. Fair play. But I would say that 80% of the time, people are going to be so tunnel vision <laughs> from where they know people are coming from that they won't be looking for you. That's the second big one that we already talked about. Now I want to talk about the differences between offensive angle holding and defensive angle holding and when you should be doing them because you might have picked up that Glanshawn has a more angle holdy, angle holdy passive playstyle and I think it offers a good way to point out the differences between uh, offensive and defensive because it's nuanced but it's important and the independent variable here is information. What information do you have on the map? Generally speaking, I would define offensive angle holding as when you hold the angle with the intent to kill, when you know that there are people pushing or they are currently there. Defensive angle holding, on the other hand, is when you are holding an angle and playing for information and or are stuck in a dangerous position with nowhere to go. The prime example of defensive angle holding would be when Glanshawn trapped himself in the container early on in the gameplay. I talked briefly about it beforehand, but in this situation, Glanshawn is defensively holding an angle because he doesn't know where players are and he has no information. He has also worked himself into a pretty bad spot and his only choice is to hold the angle and play for information to get himself out of there. That information comes when he sees two people cross to the other side. His mistake here is not going on the offensive and holding the outside angle by the boxes and choosing to instead continue to play the defense. In the end, someone comes from the angle that he should have been watching on the boxes and he dies. And with that, that wraps up this positioning guide and the return of the Review My Gameplay series. I will likely make a part two to cover some different aspects of positioning, but if you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it, comment down below. What would you like to see me cover? Do you want to see this series continues? If you enjoy it that much, subscribe. It helps me out a ton. Thanks to Glanshawn for allowing me to roast his gameplay today, and thank you all for watching. My name is Catalyst, and I will see you all another time.